make good your preparations, for today will be long and bloody work. These bulls are like wheat to be harvested. We will cut down this crop and sow the field afresh with our corpses. <laughs> YouTube, what the crap's going on? Gotta love those general speeches. Man, they, they should put those back in Warhammer. They were great. So, it is almost Throwback Thursday. Yeah, almost throwback. If, if it's not already by the time you're watching this. And I have quite the throwback Thursday prepared for you. It was, um, I had some replays submitted to me that is the grand final um, of a tournament. And you get to see Greek Arachlis, who is actually on the other side of the battlefield of Syracuse, facing off against Hamilcar Barca, who is in command of none other than his namesake Carthage here. So pretty excited to see some tournament replays, especially after the ancestral update. Um, so that it's not just a spaghetti line fest, so I'm pretty excited about this. So Syracuse and Car Carthage. Now for those of you who love Rome 2, you're going to be fairly familiar with this matchup, but for those of you who are maybe more into Warhammer and you're wondering what this matchup is, well both factions have a pretty good array um, of heavy hoplites, with Syracuse having the edge in terms of probably having the better unit, kind of. Um, I mean Carthage does have ultra heavy hoplites too. Um, but Carthage has a pretty good mid-tier hoplite, uh, and again, so does Syracuse, but it kind of depends on the picks. Um, Syracuse has good heavy, um, heavy, uh, shock cavalry. Carthage does not. Carthage has access to elephants. Syracuse has better skirmishers. There's kind of a trade of things between these two factions. Um, and if we look at what's been brought on the battlefield today, let me hit a couple of key units. There is a bit of a skirmish starting now between two mercenary Balearic Slingers, and in this case Syracuse does have a massive skirmish advantage. There are a couple of archers mixed in, I believe, with some slingers on this other side, so a lot of skirmishers on the field. Looks like um, six in total for Syracuse. So keep that in mind that Carthage is going to be at a skirmish disadvantage. Um, and when we look at the infantry, Carthage has a mix of late Carthaginian hoplites. Um, there's mercenary Samnite warriors and Libyan infantry mixed in with these hoplites. But there's one really key unit here that I want to point out to you. And it's right here, this mercenary noble fighter. So this is a heavy sword infantry that deals good armor-piercing damage, has a big charge, and a headhunt ability that mean that it is going to be a tremendous cut above your typical mid-tier Greek infantry and sword infantry that you're going to see on the battlefield. When I say Greek, I mean hoplite-style infantry. Um, so yes, Carthage uses some of that. So for the Carthaginian cavalry, there's several mercenary Scutari cav mixed with Carthaginian cav, which is all just a good medium anti-large cavalry unit that definitely doubles um, as multi-purpose in taking out skirmishers and a little bit of rear charging on infantry. But remember, rear charging infantry in Rome 2, while it is potentially devastating, isn't always as simple as it can be in Warhammer when you have a good heavy cavalry just annihilate a unit of infantry in a single rear charge. A lot of these units, especially these heavily armored hoplites, it'll take multiple hits um, to actually take a lot of damage from these Carthaginian cavalry, so just bear that in mind. So, for the Syracusans, they have a lot of hoplites on the field. No surprise for a Greek faction. They've got mercenary Etruscan hoplites, thorax hoplites, mercenary veteran hoplites, and these guys are going to be extremely well armored. So, something to remember with them. Very defensive units. And then down on this right hand flank is some mercenary Samnite warriors. Now, both sides are fielding these. These are a defensive sword unit. It's kind of like a hoplite with a sword in their hand. So, slightly better attack, probably, than your typical hoplite. Uh, but similar stats in terms of defense and armor. Um, and then their, their cavalry is somewhat weak. So basically, just to sum it up, Carthage is at a huge skirmish disadvantage, and technically when it comes to infantry, Syracuse really has the overall advantage. Um, however, Syracuse has no answer to the mercenary noble fighters, and they're going to have to use their skirmishers or some other crafty means to deal with this noble fighter, or else it will absolutely cut a hole right through their center line and start to cause problems. Although I said Syracuse, for a general rule here, has better infantry, um, none of the infantry that Syracuse has here is going to do really fast or heinous damage to Carthage. It's going to take time, so Syracuse would have to make use of that. Let's hit play and let the battle play out here. 
Um, you can see that um, the Carthaginian flavor has moved a lot of his cavalry to the flanks, probably hoping for an opportunity to get some skirmishers. Here, the charge of the mercenary Sam Knights was interrupted. Not going to see a lot of kills and the Carthaginian cavalry to take damage, but it at least gives the Carthaginian Sam Knight warriors the advantage of having had a clean charge. Over here, the late Carthaginian Hoplites and the late Libyans are going to do a good job of holding these swords for a long time. They won't win, but it's going to allow for a cavalry engagement on this flank that the Carthaginian player is going to badly need. Here, an excess infantry unit, this mercenary veteran Hoplite, was pulled out to go help with the cavalry fight because clearly they don't want to lose all their skirmishers. But that means, again, there's no one over here to double team this mercenary noble fighter who has already started to just absolutely hack its way through. This, um, Thorax Hoplite, who is hopelessly outclassed in that fight. Just give you guys a comparison here. This mercenary Sam Knight warrior in this fight has picked up 10 kills in roughly the same amount of time that this one's picked up 40. So, yeah, just kind of give you all give you all an idea of the difference. In Rome 2, there are certain sword units that are just a cut or two above the typical. And Noble Fighter, although it does have superiors in the game, in this fight, it has no superior. And it is going to be a very tough unit. And like I said, you can see it's quickly cutting through these Thorax Hopple days. Now this uh, late Libyan and the General's bodyguard are pressuring the skirmishers. So this is a great play by Carthage to get these skirmishers off the battlefield. This is going to be a key to winning if Carthage wants to win. But there are more mercenary Etruscans because, again, that infantry advantage that Syracuse has is now playing out in the form of numbers. And it's also going to be playing out in the form of quality in certain spots. These mercenary Etruscans ought to hold out quite nicely against the late Carthaginians and especially against these late Libyans. So there are definitely pockets of infantry fighting that are going to favor the Syracusan player. It's just going to take a while for those to play out because, again, the Syracusan infantry here is not attack focused. They're more defense focused. So it'll take a while for that to play out. You can see here that the mercenary veteran Hoplites got together with the Italian cavalry and were able to defeat some of the Carthaginian cavalry. And again, over here, the Sam Knights are starting to overwhelm these poor late Libyan hoplites that are not meant for that kind of fight, not on a permanent basis, at least. You can see the Carthaginian cavalry desperately driving home attacks to try and loosen up these Sam Knight warriors a bit, but they're being intercepted by the Italian cavalry and the mercenary veteran hoplites. Over here, though, the mercenary noble fighter has already racked up 100 kills, cut through a thorax hoplite, and now it's moving on to another. Once these guys get a taste for blood, they're not going to give it up. <laughs> so, again, Syracuse in trouble. Their general is in this unit, and that noble fighter is going to almost assuredly kill the Syracuse in general. However, Carthage is in a heap of trouble here on the flanks, as their flanks are starting to get rolled up under immense pressure. Uh, this flank got a little bit of support from an extra Libyan hapote, which will help, but I don't think it tilts the, uh, the battle. Um, so you'll notice a lot of the Syracusan hoplites are actually in the hoplite wall. I'm just going to give them extra melee defense and shield strength. The Carthaginian ones are not, and they're going to have significantly lesser stats. Kind of wonder if those shouldn't have maybe been turned over into the, uh, the hoplite wall formation. You see the Samnites struggling to cut through some of these hoplite units. Very, very different than the uh, mercenary noble fighter who... Did some damage to the enemy general, but then took out and took another charge into the back of these mercenary veteran hoplites, and now they're going to come over here to fend off another unit. They are up to 117 kills, and that should climb relatively quick, but they're exhausted. So fatigue in the game is going to start lowering their attack stats, and I believe their defense stats as well. So the noble fighters are tired from having cut down so many enemies. And there are still a number of enemies. Here comes Battle Rhythm that's going to try and help out these mercenary Samnite warriors. And a second wind from the general onto the mercenary noble fighters. And that is going to be a very clutch play by Carthage. That second wind is going to make these mercenary noble fighters fresh again. And you can see they're pulling out to get themselves another charge. Um, they're very, very effective on the charge. 38 charge bonus right now. So... Might as well use them for that. They're kind of like shock infantry when they get in this case. 136 kills, and they should be able to do a lot more. You can see the general's bodyguard desperately trying to break the leadership of the mercenary veteran hoplites. 
Over here, repeated charges are starting to get the leadership wavering. But Carthage is really struggling, and there is a lot of Syracusan infantry left, including a mercenary Etruscan that, for whatever reason, has kind of been left here at the moment. I'm assuming that uh, Arachlis is busy somewhere else and hasn't moved this unit in, but he'll need to move it in in order to help finish off the Carthaginians here. You can see the noble fighters going to cycle out of that fight. After having done some damage, 153 kills, they're now going to charge the mercenary Etruscan Hoplite back here. Etruscan Hoplites are almost all defense. They don't do a lot of offense, but as this noble fighter gets more tired and gets further into this fight, the health is being chipped away at, and it will start to drop a lot faster than it would early in a fight, but don't kid yourself. These guys are going to cause immense damage. This is a good play by Syracuse, though. Go into the Hoplite wall. Grind out these noble fighters for as long as you can, tire them down, get that melee defense up. So you can see there it's all the way up to 77 and on top of 85 armor. So those noble fighters are going to have some significant work to cut through that. The Carthaginian cavalry is still working desperately to buy its infantry some much needed help here. You can see over here though a couple of pretty healthy mercenary Etruscan hoplites. The Samnite Warrior, although its leadership is poor at the moment, has a lot of troops left. And there's extra Samnite Warriors chasing cavalry. Just look at that noble fighter. And you can see, though, it's starting to fray at the edges a little bit. 85 kills. It's getting some help from a cavalry unit here. This will mostly help with leadership at this point. The cavalry can hurt the leadership by attacking the Etruscan Hoplites in the back. Noble fighter, well over 200 kills. But will it have enough? We'll have enough oomph to get this fight done because there are still hundreds of Syracusans who need killing if Carthage wants to win. And I would say that the battle at this point is looking pretty favorable for Syracuse, honestly, because all this heavy infantry is going to be hard for Carthage to deal with. And that infantry advantage from Syracuse may, may prove decisive. The noble fighters have gotten free. Right now, they're active in terms of their, um, their, uh, what do we call it, fatigue level. I know that's not the word I'm looking for, but it'll come to me later. <laughs> so they're going to get back into the fight here. Quite the fight between Arachlis and Hamilcar Barca here. Mercenary Noble Fighters are going to get a headhunt. This is going to uh, make them extremely tired, but they're going to also get huge morale and huge melee attack. There comes a battle rhythm as well, which is going to boost that melee attack even further. 260 kills on the Mercenary Noble Fighters. These guys are doing an incredible job. And if there is a second wind available, if he uses it after all that, he could get this unit back up to fresh and keep it fighting for quite a bit longer. But we'll see, because now they're exhausted due to the headhunt. It exerts their energy a great deal. That battle rhythm is still in play, too, but it also um, puts exertion. There comes the second win at the very end of it. So that was actually beautifully played by Hamilcar. But I'm not sure it's enough. Despite all the kills here, the mercenary noble fighters are now entirely surrounded. You can see them trying to protect their flank by charging what they thought was going to be two troops coming in for a rear charge, but one way or the other, it exposes the rear of this unit, and they are going to struggle with morale at this point and be routed. And that is going to be a victory for Greek Rackless in Syracuse in game one. There are more games. I will bring those to you, and I will do it in a fashion that doesn't give away who the victor is, and I'm going to put each of these in their own video so you guys can watch them. And I do hope you watch them. And again, this gives you even more content for your Throwback Thursday. So I hope you're excited about that. So GG to Greek Arachlis and Hamilcar. This was awesome. Great first match. Love seeing Carthage use there. It's just wasn't able to pull it off. Syracuse here really focused on heavy infantry. And it paid off for him in the end. Syracuse had the edge there. Carthage was not able to use their cavalry advantage. As well as the single unit quality advantage here in the mercenary noble fighter. Um, Syracuse was able to get the job done. So hope you all enjoyed that one. Air of Carthage signing out, and I will see you on the next battle.